There is nothing common about, between, or across the planes of oblivion. They are the very definition of change and variation, manifesting all possibilities and validating all understanding and misunderstanding. You seek similarities where there are only differences. These words, spoken by a powerful dramora of Cold Harbour, demonstrate just how difficult it is to compile a bestry for the many races of oblivion. Hellhounds, black as night with incandescent blood-red eyes. These daedric canines share many aesthetic similarities with the nightmare courses. Yet in oblivion, similarities mean nothing, and we cannot draw conclusions based on the same criteria we would on Mundus, in our realm where things make more sense. Lyranth continues to say on the topic, Ever the mortal mind defends itself against the reality of what it cannot comprehend, by the pathetic imposition of familiar patterns on entities of inconvenient hyperagonal morphology. Beneath the tangible layers of condescension and disdain in her tone, and in her words, the Dramora sums it up well. The Daedra are not like us, and the Daedra will forever endeavour to convince us that we cannot ever hope to understand them. Fortunately for anyone listening to this, we Daedrologists think that's nonsense, because if it were true, we'd be out of the job, and I'd have to resort to chopping wood at the Solitude Sawmill to fund my College of Winterhold tuition fees. Hey guys, it's Drew the Daedrologist here, and welcome back to Fudge Muppet. In this video, we're going to talk about every single known race of lesser Daedra. While much mystery surrounds the majority of them, I'll tell you everything there is to know about each and every one. So get settled, because there are many to talk talk about. But before we get started, I will be skipping over a few races, and that's only because they have their own videos on the channel, videos which delve into much more detail. So if you want to hear more about the Dromora, the Golden Saints, the Dark Seducers, or the Elemental Atronarchs, be sure to check out their respective videos. There are also videos on the channel covering each of the Daedric Princes, so after this video we will know about every living thing in Oblivion. Alright, let's get into it. First things first, what makes a Daedra lesser? Well, it's actually pretty simple. Are you a Daedric Prince? If you answered no to this question, then you are a lesser Daedra. A common misconception is that, if a Daedra can create a plane of oblivion, then they are greater, and that lesser Daedra are those who inhabit another Daedra's realm. However, we see through the collective realms of the Elemental Atronarchs, as well as the created realms of many powerful Dromora, that even lesser Daedra are capable of creating planes and pockets. The Dromora, as well as the Zivali, will staunchly argue that they are not lesser Daedra, as they are, for the most part, more powerful and more intelligent than most of Oblivion's inhabitants. Unfortunately though, they can't avoid the reality that they are lesser. The first race of Lesser Daedra to talk about are called the Aurorans. These are not to be confused with the Aureals, or the Golden Saints as they are colloquially known as in the Shivering Isles. The Aurorans are a race of humanoid Daedra, supposedly made from pure light. Fittingly, they serve the Lady of Light, the Daedric Prince Meridia. They therefore choose to live in Meridia's coloured rooms, reforming there upon death. Their affiliation to this prince and her plane give them an innate magical connection to colour and hue. While they predominantly harness shock magic, wielding axes infused with lightning, they can also channel the power of light to attack their enemies. The Aurorans are closely tied to the ancient Heartland Elves, partially because of their golden armour, but also because the Aelids made a pact with Meridia during the Elysian Rebellion, allowing them to summon Aurorans to fight alongside them. The legendary sorcerer king of the Aelids, Umaril the Unfeathered, was half elf, half Auroran, and he was a mighty warrior, only bested by the even more legendary Pelennor Whitestrake. The next race of Lesser Daedra, like many on this list, has not played a significant role in the history of the mortal plane of Mundus. As a result, there isn't a great deal of information about them. This race is the Bane Kin, and they are most notably found in service to the Daedric Prince of Domination, Molag Bal. They are small winged humanoids, with horns protruding from their tail and temples. Surprisingly, the Banekin in many cases can speak the common tongue of Tamriel, and this makes them very useful as familiars to powerful wizards. Up next we have the Reptilian Clan Fear. With a sharp beak, talons, and a wide bony crest jutting from their heads, the Clan Fear are not the most docile of lizards. At least 
least not in the presence of mortals. These creatures look like something you may find in the fetid depths of Black Marsh, only they are known to serve many of the superior Daedric entities. With animal level intelligence, they work best as cannon fodder, ferocious yet expendable. While I stated earlier that we wouldn't be talking about the Dark Seducers, it is worth mentioning that there is a race called the Daedra Seducers, or simply Seducers. It is likely that these are simply Seducers who defected from the clan system found in the Shivering Isles, as the literature on Daedra Seducers does refer to them as Mazkin, which is the official racial name for the Dark Seducers. It is said that those Seducers who aided Mehrunes Dagon in the invasion of the Battle Spire were rewarded with a change in their image, making them the embodiments of avarice and treachery, granting them bat wings and superior strength. Next we have the Daedric Titans, which are gigantic winged beasts created as imitations of the dragons found in Mundus. These beasts serve Molag Bal, as he used dark sorceries to corrupt and transform the dragon, Bozik Odstran, into the first titan. By removing the dragon's soul and replacing it with a Daedric vestige, the titans were born. With dark black skin and an additional pair of limbs, the titans mimic the form of the dragons by using flaming essence draining spells. From magnificent to rather mundane, our next Daedra is called the Daedrat. It's true, not every race in Oblivion exists to terrify mortals. Daedrats are exactly what you'd imagine, Daedric vermin, only they have glowing blue eyes and coarse, scabrous hides. Our next race will be far more familiar to those of you who have explored the lands of Morrowind and Cyrodiil. Behold the Daedroth, feral and beast-like. These towering bipedal crocodiles could tear an armoured man asunder with its mighty gaping maw. Should you be lucky enough to find yourself out of reach to the beast's gnarled claws and huge jaws, you'll soon discover that they also possess the ability to belch fireballs. In some cases they may even spit poison or shock spells. Daedroth serve many princes, but a notable connection would be to Dagon, during his invasion of Cyrodiil. There is some confusion when it comes to the naming conventions of this race, as the word Daedroth can be used as a singular form of the word Daedra. As a result, there is a creature called simply Lesser Daedra in Daggerfall, which is pretty much identical to the Daedroth. Next we have a small insect called a Fiendroth. The name would suggest a creature similar in stature to the Daedroth, but no, the Fiendroth is a weevil, a six-legged insect with steel mandibles and a venomous stinger. It apparently requires no physical sustenance, and can live off nothing more than the cries and lamentations of your enemies. The mortals of the late Second Era were a peculiar bunch, and the Fiendroth became a common pet to many lonely travellers. Not to be confused with Fire Daedra or Flame Atronarchs, our next race is the Fire Demon. In appearance they seem to be some kind of reptilian demon, life of limb with long horns and a tendency to exhale flames. These creatures are from the Neverworld, often gating themselves into our plane of existence on some errand of their choosing. They are formidable foes, highly intelligent, completely chaotic in nature, and powerful in the ways of magic. Often they are very resistant to fire, and are subject to attack only by special weapons. Fire demons also have the ability to see invisible creatures. Next we have the Grievous Twilight and the Winged Twilight. The Winged Twilight with their female avian forms serve as messengers from the Daedric Prince Azura, while the Grievous Twilight are foul putrefactions of Azura's servants, looking more like winged black gargoyles. Unsurprisingly, this corruption was masterminded by none other than Molag Bal, making the useful creatures much better suited to the Cold Harbor aesthetic. Another race found in Bal's service to the Harvesters, with a snake-like body, four sharp clawed arms, and a stare that would put Medusa to shame, the Harvesters are perfect for scaring what remains of the soul out of the mortals in Cold Harbor. I mentioned Hellhounds at the top of the video, and I doubt you need me to tell you what these creatures are. With a jet black pelt and blood red eyes, the Hellhounds are the Daedric equivalent to the good boys of the mortal realm. Our next race, however, is less axiomatic, and unfortunately there is scarce little to say about them. These are the Herns, the bestial hunter humanoids of Hercene's hunting grounds. With long narrow horns and goat's legs, they are commonly confused with Scamps and Morphoid Daedra. Morphoid Daedra are also mostly unknown to mortals, however they appear more like demons than beasts. The Hearn is doubtless inspired by Hearn the Hunter of Anglo-Saxon folklore, which in turn was likely inspired by an ancient creature from Celtic folklore. If you're an arachnophobe, now's the time to skip ahead, because the races residing in Mafala's realm are next. 
Skittering across the ghost webs of the spiral skein, we can find the Horva Daedra, the Spider Daedra, and the Spider Kith. If you thought the bulbous beetles called Horvas inhabiting the marshes of Valenwood and Argonia were repulsive enough, just take a look at the Daedra of the same name. These grotesque arachnids are covered with crimson spikes, and aren't the type to stay out of your way in the corners of the ceiling. As for the spider Daedra, with their spider bodies topped with a human torso, they are notoriously unruly and irrational. They are so irritable in fact, that even the most devoted Mafala worshippers are hesitant to summon them. Finally, there's the spider Kith, a navy-skinned race of humanoids living in Mafala's domain. The Daedra, as evidence through the words of Lyranth the Fool Killer, are constantly trying to belittle mortals, claiming that they couldn't spare a fort for the opinions of Tamriel's finite beings. Yet they so often relish the idea of terrifying us. Take the race known as the Hungers, for example. These pale, gangly creatures look like they've been ripped from the pages of a horror story, with their demonic faces and long, slivering tongues. Hungers predominantly serve the Prince Boethia. However, Sheagorath has a fondness for them. They are free to wander his realm as physical representations of his demented side, and the disturbed minds of the realm's inhabitants. Jigalag, the Prince of Perfect Order, requires a legion of perfect soldiers to carry out his inevitable goals. To do this, he employs the Knights of Order. Garbed in crystal armor, no mortal has seen their true appearance. It is believed that they do not think, they are but Jigalag's mindless tools, following orders and swinging their crystalline swords with impossible efficacy. Some sources claim that these knights were once mortal worshippers of the prince, and when they truly embraced Jigalag's undeniable certainty, their flesh turned as hard as crystal, and they sacrificed their delusions of free will and free thought at the altar of Jigalag's perfection. This would explain why they do not have Daedra hearts, and instead have hearts of order. If this story is true, then they would not be a Daedric race at all. But the Prince of Order doesn't seem like the kind of entity willing to spend an afternoon explaining the origins of his minions to a mortal Daedrologist like myself. Next we have the races of Daedra residing in the endless archives of Hermaeus Mora. The realm of forbidden knowledge is not meant for mortals, and those who attempt to unearth Mora's secrets in their search of power and wisdom are quickly ensnared by the unnatural forces residing within the paper labyrinth. If you can navigate the sea of slick green ink and roiling tentacles, if you can avoid the ire of the eternally tormented ghosts, and steer clear of the rapacious darkness, then you might live long enough to be captured by the lurkers or the seekers, who guard the library and all of its mesmeric wonders. The lurkers are vile amphibious humanoids. They look like a Lovecraftian nightmare, as though they gestated for centuries beneath the viscid depths of the Ink Sea, before crawling out as ungainly mucoid monstrosities. Should they spy an intruder, they will spew tentacles from their mouths. If the lurkers are Mora's enforcers, then the seekers are his librarians. These levitating masses of tentacles drift around Apocrypha, stopping periodically to read from tomes they conjure from thin air. While they may seem more timid than lurkers, don't expect a seeker to spare you if you're caught stalking Mora's plane in search of forbidden knowledge. Next we have the Nightmare Coursers, and beyond the point made at the beginning of the video, there isn't a great deal to talk about. They are jet black, flame reefed Daedric horses, notorious for their chaotic temperaments. Despite this, they were popular mounts to adventurers during the Interregnum. Next we have a race of Daedra found almost exclusively in Nocturnal's realm Everglome. They are often miscategorized as seducers, however there is no evidence of any relation between the two. The Nocturnal Shrikes resemble tall, beautiful, scantily clad women, and like many of the more intelligent Daedric races, they are known for organizing themselves into a caste system, distinguishing themselves as either lesser or greater. Behold Oblivion's thickest inhabitants. No, I'm not talking about nocturnal shrikes or seducers, I'm talking about ogrims. These chunky boys are loyal to the Daedric Prince Malakath, and what they lack in intelligence they make up for with sheer bulk. Next we have one of the better known races of Oblivion, a race that prides itself on constantly being embroiled in some kind of mischief. The scamps serve predominantly as errand runners and messengers for the Daedric Princes. They aren't particularly intelligent, nor strong, nor brave, but in greater numbers, they can be a nuisance. Scamps delight in cruelty, and can shoot fireballs from their hands or make fire rain from the sky, so if you contain one, they certainly have their uses. 
Our next race is one closely tied to the Prince of Wishes, Pacts and Bargains, Clavicus Vile, and this is clear through their prominent horns, horns which are included in most depictions of their prince. This race is called the Scarfin. The Scarfin are most commonly found in the Fields of Regret, one of Vile's realms, and with the exception of their large horns, they look quite similar to the Ultima and the Dunma Elves. They are known to communicate using mirrors, and harness a unique magical ability involving the creation of spectral masks that explode to attack targets. Our penultimate race is called the Vermi. They are mindless and aggressive, a perfect combination for more intelligent Daedra to abuse. According to the book Spirit of the Daedra, written by an anonymous Dramora, the Vermi make for perfect beaters when hunting mortals. You are the prey and we are the huntsmen, the scamps are the hounds and the Vermi are the beaters. And finally we come to the Watchers, the last lesser Daedra on the list. The Watchers are flying tentacled monsters, similar in appearance to Beholders. Aside from an array of writhing tentacles, the Watchers are best known for the huge probing eyeball encompassing most of their bodies. While the connection has not been made in any sources regarding the Watchers, they are surely related to the creatures inhabiting Hermaeus Mora's realm of Apocrypha. And assuming that is the case, the Prince of Forbidden Knowledge often takes the form of a Watcher when manifesting himself to mortals. And there you have it guys, every other race of Lesser Daedra we know of. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope I didn't miss any races. If I did, I'm sure someone will let me know. Thanks so much for watching guys, I've been Drew, and I'll see you in the next one.